didn't get too overconfident coming this one because it's going to be really tough for him to come back. Um, I think that it's interesting too in the sense that Mackenzie's two megas are both kind of countered by Maal, but Maal didn't do anything that game really. Mm -hmm. So uh, he, Zach's job this game is going to have to be to find a way to get Maal free to get some attacks off because it just didn't get anything done in the previous game. Yeah, I agree. McKinsey did a great job of corralling that Maul while and making sure that it could not run rampant over her team. And we see the leads coming back out. Again, the Aegis Lash for McKinsey, but with the Venusaur this time up against the Ludicolo and the Rotom Heat on the field for Zach. Uh, Ludicolo bringing that fake out pressure you've already mentioned right from the start, not having to worry about switching for, to get that Scrafty in. Yeah, I think that changing it up and bringing Ludicolo in makes sense here. It's going to be tough given that Venusaur is the Mega that his opponent was likely to pick, although it doesn't like dealing with Kangaskhan any better. But uh, it does bring Fake out, which helps. Uh, maybe coming in perhaps instead of Scrafty. Another option that Ludicolo has here is that usually it comes with Assault Vest, which increases the special defense here. So even though it has a typing disadvantage against Venusaur, it's not quite so easy for Venusaur to knock out of the battle. Uh, so it should be able to at least stick around a little while. It also helps against Rotom for the same reasons. Uh, lots of special attackers in McKenzie's team, so it, it'll be able to stay around and do some damage with its excellent type coverage. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how that Ludicolo reacts to this Mega Venusaur on the team on the field now, uh, looking a little bit more impressive than the than the dancing pineapple on the other side. But the fake out does come off and hit the Venusaur, going to make sure that Venusaur cannot do anything this turn. And Rotom starting to spread status now, hoping to catch a Protect out from that Aegis Slash gets the uh, Paralysis onto Venusaur. While Aegis Slash is going to change its stance, go right on the offensive here, going to fire off a Shadow Ball uh, right into the face of that Rotom Heat, calling the bluff a critical hit. Not worried about that overheat at all. <laughs> I love that play. You know, sometimes you have to be willing to make plays like that one. You know, uh, she left the Aegis Slash in as well in the previous game, but chose not to attack. This time, again, leaves it in against the Rotom, but attacks. You know, Zach's probably just having a hard time getting into her head right now. It's twice mm -hmm. now the Aegis Slash kind of got the better of it. Uh, cool to see Rotom using the Thunder Wave move also. It's more common we see Will-O-Wisp like we've seen from McKenzie's side, but Zach seems to be focused a lot on controlling speed. We've got that Trick Room on the Gothitelle, so cool strategy here. Yeah, definitely interesting to see how people adjust to uh, different ways of controlling the speed of the various Pokemon on the field. Aegislash is going to go ahead and King's Shield itself, but the Overheat coming off again from the Rotom Heat onto that Mega Venusaur. The Thick Fat doing work there, not going to let the Rotom pick up that KO there. Feeling about half damage as Ludicolo scalds into the King's Shield, but Sludge Bomb out onto the Rotom Heat, gets the KO for McKenzie, and picks up a little bit more of the momentum just by a Pokemon count. Yeah, that's a big knockout. It's not a Mega, but Rotom's really something that's important for her to remove. It can do lots of damage to all of her Pokemon, especially to Aegis Slash, who's an important Pokemon here. You've got to assume that Zack is Maul. I was one of the two Pokemon in the back. And Aegis Slash with that substitute is really, really difficult for it to deal with because it pretty much has to rely on using Sucker Punch. So uh, mm -hmm. likely to see Scrafty Maul as the last two here. And if we end up with just Ludicolo and Maul left against Aegis Slash and something else, it's a pretty good position for her. So I'd like to see her try to work into that situation and. Uh, Zach's going to have to try to pick up a couple KOs without losing one of his here to prevent it. So important first knockout in this battle, uh, especially since he's kind of got the momentum from winning the first game. Zach does have some options now. You see he brought both of his two fake outers uh, in this game, which can be very useful in making sure that McKinsey doesn't uh, do what she wants to do, basically. It makes it, It's really disruptive for McKinsey's plan making here. Yeah, I think the whole team just seems to be built around finding opportunities for Maul to attack. He's got Thunder Wave, he's got Trick Room, he's got two Fake Outs. There's lots of different ways to open up the turn so that Maul can attack for free. And it looks like not even going to worry about faking out this time, just going with the Scald onto Aegislash. Gets the burn, um, but not dealing too much damage as Aegislash is still in its shield form. Crunch going off as well, going to deal quite a bit of damage, but still not quite enough. Aegislash in the red, going to go ahead and switch now to Blade form and do the Flash Cannon right onto that Scrafty, which, of course, not worried about the burn there, but Venusaur is paralyzed, and Zack does get a break. Yeah, I mean, that kind of happens, right? Sometimes the breaks go one way, sometimes the breaks go the other. We saw a critical hit one direction, now a fully paralysis, which is a little more likely the other direction, and also the burn from Scald. Uh, the burn's going to negate those leftovers and add a little bit more damage. It pre prevents Aegislash Slash from stalling out here. And with Venusaur weakened, now we see Zack with the better position in this game. He's got a big health advantage. It looks like he's going to be able to get in that position where he's got that 3-2 lead that he really needed to get here. Uh, if he's able to do that and get Maul out here, start cycling those fake outs, mm -hmm. he's likely going to be able to take this game. So it's going to be important for the next couple of turns for McKenzie to do something. And it looks like Zack is going to go right on the offensive from the start, using that Ice Beam onto the Aegislash. Not very effective, but Aegislash 
not very healthy to begin with, so still gets the KO. Scrafty's crunch onto that Mega Venusaur. We know how specially bulky it is, but can it withstand this crunch? Yes. Survives with 28 HP. Sludge Bomb does connect with Ludicolo, dealing about half damage thanks to that Assault Vest and the incredible special bulk of that Ludicolo. Yeah, if she wasn't already aware of it, she likely learned the Assault Vest is there. Uh, it's been a super effective hit. They're only doing about half its da HP and damage. A little unfortunate for her in the sense that if it hadn't been fully paralyzed last turn, the Ludicolo would probably have been knocked out. But still gets some important damage on there. Uh, likely puts it in range of an attack from Salamence here. Intimidate's going to weaken Scrafty. So she's not in an unwinnable position by any stretch of the imagination. This game's very much up in the air, especially depending on when her last Pokemon is. Uh, she could still have that Garchomp, which could be very effective, helping to finish off both of these Pokemon and having an advantage against Maul. So we can get an Earthquake or two off. So uh, she's still, depending on her last Pokemon here, she's in, still in pretty good shape. She seems to be kind of splitting damage here. She did some to Scrafty, some to Ludicolo. It's hard to anticipate what her last Pokemon might be, since she's not really clearing a win condition for either of them. Like she's just trying to get them both weak enough that she can use some spread moves to clean up. Mm -hmm. And we do see Salamence coming out. We've seen a lot of Salamence in this tournament so far. A heavy offensive threat, usually running that Choice Scarf just to get an attack in before anything else can happen. Uh, of course, Zach may want to get some of those fake out cyclings going as we see Ludicolo does retreat in favor of that Mawile that's been hiding in the back this whole time. Uh, is going to get the Intimidate off again onto the Mega Venusaur and the Salamence. Uh, unfortunately, Salamence usually runs specially in this uh, format, but does get the Draco Meteor onto that fairy type Mawile. No damage dealt, and the Crunch does get the KO on Venusaur. Very smart switch in from Zach there. Gets the KO, gets Mawile out onto the field safely and is now free to have that Mawile uh, Mega Evolve and deal some good damage, uh, even though Rotom Heat is now on the field for McKenzie. Ah, so we had seen the last time, so it's Rotom. Uh, but tough spot there with the Draco Meteor going into the Maul there. Uh, as you mentioned before, the Choice Scarf, the, by far the most common item on Salamence. It helps it, you know, and King has gotten dominated metagame. It gets both the Intimidate off and is able to attack before anything other than Sucker Punch. Uh, the problem with that here is that being locked into Draco Meteor means that it's not going to be able to do anything to Maul for the rest of the game. So as long as Rotom can go down here, uh, it's going to be a win for Zach. Yeah, definitely. Zach now has identified his win condition as just getting that Rotom Heat off the field. And as soon as that happens, that should be good game. Mawile does go ahead and Mega Evolve for that Mega Protect, just to make sure that Rotom Heat doesn't get a free overheat off. Draco Meteor does connect with the Scrafty, though. Going to deal some good damage there. Uh, a little bit over, starting a little bit over a half. I don't know if this will get it. Yes, does get the KO. And it looks like Salamence does, can't do anything to Mawile, but gets the KO onto Scrafty. While Rotom is trying to Will-O-Wisp, doesn't want to get Sucker Punched before it can get an attack off. And out comes Ludicolo. Now, this is getting exciting. Uh, down to two Pokemon on both sides. Both, both, uh, I guess, there's kind of a threat both ways, right? We've mm -hmm. got Fake Out coming from Ludicolo here. Uh, with the Protect down on Mile, you'd expect, you know, Rotom to just blow it away with the Overheat, but it's not going to have that option here, so it has to Protect. Mm -hmm. Definitely has to Protect here. And Ludicolo, we're going to see if Ludicolo will be able to Fake Out anything. No, Fake Out's the Rotom again. Salamence is going to keep trying to Draco Meteor. Really has to be fishing for a critical hit here, thanks to the special attack drop from the Draco Meteor and the Assault Vest dealing a little bit of damage. Important chip damage onto Ludicolo here, but the play rough from Mega Mawile getting the free KO onto Salamence, making sure that nothing can hurt that uh, Ludicolo anymore. So they created a pretty awkward situation for McKenzie there. Uh, she looks like she's in a big hole down 1-2 here, but depending on how this plays out, she could actually still take the game. Uh, the obvious play for the Maul here is to protect, not wanting to get overheated here, but Ludicolo obviously able to do some big damage here. It's got the Assault Vest, so if it does overheat first, it's likely going to have trouble finishing it off, but we see a Sucker Punch instead. Sucker Punch does come out from Zack. McKenzie was trying to get an attack off on, from that Rotom. Is going to be able to recover some HP with that Citrus Berry there. And the overheat does come off, and it will connect. And it will connect with Ludicolo. Going to deal just enough damage to get the KO there. Wow. Gets the KO onto Ludicolo, but still leaves that Mawile up. And now Rotom is at minus two special attack. Absolutely the right play. I didn't quite get a chance to get around to talking about it. But that was sort of the play. If Mawile protects or, you know, Really, I guess even with the Sucker Punch, you know, taking out Ludicolo and removing the threat of Scald puts her in a much better position than taking out the Maul, even though on the surface that's the bigger threat is the Mega. Mm -hmm. Now she has the option of Will-O-Wisping it, and after that she's going to have a really hard time taking any damage. Rotom does Will-O-Wisp, and it does connect with the Mawile. Mawile not going for the Sucker Punch again here. Uses Play Rough, but of course burned and resisted. Deals some decent damage. A critical hit. That'll do it.
Uh, does take some burn damage, but now Rotom has to be a little bit worried about maybe another critical hit coming, uh, or maybe a couple play roughs if an overheat misses. Yeah, the critical hits are always going to make this a little more interesting. Uh, you'll see her try to stall out a little bit here, mm -hmm. the protect, but what's really going to happen here is sooner or later, she's going to get to the point where she's going to have to try to fire an overheat. Uh, if she's critical hit by Sucker Punch, she will lose. Otherwise, uh, she will win unless overheat misses, in which case we get another interesting scenario where she loses a little bit more health and things get really interesting. And we're going to see that play out right now. Mawile does get the Sucker Punch off, and it's not quite enough. 14 HP, Rotom Heat, Overheat is going to connect with that Mawile. It's going down, the health bar is going down, and it gets the KO! Mawile faints, and Rotom Heat wins it for McKenzie. What a brilliantly played series by her. Wow. I just, well, I'm really impressed. It just seemed like Look at that crowd. <laughs> crowd is going crazy, and they should be. Uh, she really deserves this. A really brilliantly played series by her. I wasn't quite sure what to expect in this matchup. It seemed like Mo had a great matchup against her team, but she controlled it extremely well. She always seemed to have the advantage there. She made great plays in almost every turn.